Okay, that's nice and dry now. So we're going to start to work up the dark side of this, um, the windmill. So I want to do some wetting to wet onto the roof here, but I'm really careful about these. I don't want to wet it all. I just want some colour to bleed together. So we're using some, this is burnt umber. And we're just going to add to that a little bit of this indigo, which is a beautiful combination of colours. We need quite a sharp edge there where the roof comes down, and that's okay. Just going to add a little bit more interest on this, the light side, just with a little weak paint. I'm just going to force that down. And again, just a, just a moist brush in there. A little bit more down here, just to define that roof, because it gets a little bit lost just there. Yep, that's what I'm after. Yeah, that looks suitably tatty. And then using pretty much raw burnt umber and sepia, this is actually made up of timbers that are all different lengths and shapes so uh, I don't want to see. this is the dark side so I don't really want to see many of those well defined but just under the eaves this is a really neat trick if you add some dark under underneath a roof like that it always looks like it's overhanging because there is shadow down there and again, I'm just adding a little bit more local colour just to make it a bit more interesting. Being careful to avoid my handrails. A little bit of dark underneath these, this roof line. And then a little bit of blue just tucked right under there. Just going to wet that first now. Just want some bleed. See how it just moved down? Just what I wanted. Yep, that's convincing. Yep, quite happy with that. Then we're going to put the lower part of this. This is the big timbers that are underneath here. Extend that down a little bit, being careful to avoid that um, that background. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our flat brush, and we're now working on this. We've lifted out the highlights for these timbers and fences. We're now going to put the shadow side in. So you just, you find that if you use a flat brush it gives you a much more convincing straight line than if you use a rigger and if you recall we were uh, concerned about this area just here because we've lost our uh, windmill so we're just going to get that back I keep turning my brush around just so it to avoid that same shape happening. Okay, that's looking quite convincing. In here is a really black area where there's a door. So I'm going to bring that all the way through the fence. We'll get that back in a second, you'll see how. And again, using the dark. It's important that your paint gets thicker as you work into the foreground because then you start getting these what I call sharps which means that you it's those that give you give you the beauty of the of the painting just these very dark bits can you see how this goes on and then suddenly the whole thing comes to life Yep, that's okay now. 
do a bit more work on these steps. If you find your, um, you end up with the same line, like here looks a bit like that, just turn your brush around um, and it will give you a different shape. So we're just putting in the darks of these steps and then we'll do some uprights here and here. Slightly awkward to work. I'm working around the um, I'm working around the um, the tripod here, so it's a little bit awkward. It's not the perfect angle for painting, but anyway, I think the steps are a bit wonky, but hey, it's Bulgaria. Okay, now I'm going to work on the background of the uh, the base of the windmill now. So we're going to change our mix because this is made of stone. So we're going to add Romba and Indigo. That's a great colour mix actually for uh, concrete too, but you can use it for old stone. So we're just going to allow a bit of bleed in there. And we want this to be dark here. Just working around them steps and this. just going to indicate some rocks just adding some more dark into that this is uh, using a bit of sepia there is actually i think down in this area here there used to be steps down here so that presumably the guys that were moving the thing around could get some purchase with their feet so i'm going to paint this foreground fairly loosely and it's all about this study of this windmill it's not about the foreground but I want to indicate so I'm just using a wet brush a bit more blue in there I'm just trying to paint this very loosely and then just with some quite dark I'm just adding some steps and rocks and things and if you want to draw into this you can do this with a stick or one of these reed pens you can draw on the original picture this was quite grassy but you can draw with this I can draw with this all of which gives you interesting effects okay yep getting there now gonna just carry on the island or the hills in the background here just want to indicate something happening here just being careful not to touch these areas that I've just painted I don't want that to bleed too much so I'm just gonna drop in some fairly wet paint into that area. I want to keep this edge here because this is what they call um, counter change which is basically the contrast between light and dark and it's a really nice area of the picture. So being God we're going to get our light out back now. I'm going to do that with so we're just going to let that dry because uh, I'll dry that with a hairdryer so I'll just turn this off again.